Methods part one. We're going to be doing our notes in this uh, in these slides. In our next set of slides for methods, we're going to be doing several examples. So here we're just going to cover concepts and terminology. What is a method? A method is a group of code that can be called to perform a task. Methods are going to be separate from main, and main can call methods by name to perform some simple task, like adding two numbers or determining what day of the week it is. Um, all the way to performing more comp complex operations like solving a maze. As a side note, methods are usually fairly simple and are usually written for tasks that are done multiple times. If you need to do it a single time, usually you won't write a method for it unless it's going to make your code significantly more easy to read. We're going to violate that rule in our examples and in most of our beginning labs just due to the fact so you can learn the syntax of how a method is set up. So we're going to be writing um, methods for things that we'd normally just do as a line of code or as a few lines of code. Readability. Um, the name of a method will tell you what it does without requiring you to analyze its code. So a method is a group of code. It may have 20 lines or maybe 100 lines to calculate the shortest path in a maze. but if the method is named solve maze or shortest path, then just by reading the name of the method, you understand what it does without actually having to do it. An example of that would be when we call the math.sqrt parenthesis parenthesis and we pass it a value. We were actually calling the square root method. And we don't really know how it's calculating the square root, but it's doing it. All we have to know is that we're saying math.sqrt, and that's going to do the square root. We don't have to know what the code inside square root is. Maintainability. The code for a task is kept in one place, rather than, than being written multiple times throughout the program. So going back to the square root example, if we actually knew all the lines that were involved with doing a square root, if we wrote those 10 lines every time we needed to do a square root, the program would still function the same. But if we had made a mistake in that code, we would have to go fix that code in 10 different places in our program. But by saying math.sqrt, if we knew that the square roots weren't working, we go to one place, fix the code that's in the S sqrt method, and then it fixes in all other 10 places because the other 10 places reference one location of code. The format for method is going to be public static return type method name parameters a method name um, a method name is a name that describes what the method does and you'll need to follow the variable naming rules for methods which start with a lowercase letter and when you get to a new word either underscore or capital letter for example when we do math.pow, we know that pow does power, so it's descriptive. It describes what it does. If you're calculating the shortest path as covered earlier, you might call your method shortest path. Parameters are data that the method needs in order to complete its task. Going back to power, power needs a base and an exponent to calculate a power. So those are the parameters it needs. It needs two numbers to calculate one number raised to a second power. Return type, the type of data a method gives back. So for example, with math.pow, it gives back a double. It receives a double, comma, double. So its two parameters are base and exponent. It returns base raised to the exponent, a single number. So it finishes running the equation for you and gives you the result. Some methods are going to do very simple things. Maybe it just prints a game board to the screen. So if you have a checkerboard, and you want to print off where everything's located, um, you would call the method, it would perform its task, it's not going to give you any data back. You just say, hey, do this, and it does it, it doesn't give you back a result. When we have methods that just need to perform a task that do not need to give a result back, we will be using void for the return type. Parameters. Why do we need them? If we make a variable in main, shouldn't it exist everywhere? No, variables only exist in the method they were created. So main is actually a method, and we are going to create variables there. But we're going to have methods that are separate from main, 
in another location. So all the variables we make in main will not exist in the other method. So what we have to do is we need to send our data that's in main to these other methods. In order to do that, we have to pass the data that our variables contain as parameters. And when we look at the parameter, we talked about after the method name, we have parameters. So you could have several parameters. For example, if you had base comma exponent, that calculates power. You might be wondering, does parameter order ma matter? Yes, because probably as you realize with math.pal, if you're trying to calculate 2 to the 5th, which is 32, you would do math.pal 2 comma 5. If you had changed the order and done math.pal 5 comma 2, your result would be 25 instead of 32 because it would be 5 to the power of 2. So the parameter order is very important. If you mess up your parameter order when calling a method, you can get a compilation, logic, or runtime error when the data is sent incorrectly to methods. Return command. Once a method has calculated an answer, it can end the method and give the result back with the return command. The format for returning a value is return value. So you send back whatever data you've calculated. Void methods do not require a return statement. They start at the beginning and go to the end, then stop. But the following return statement can be used to end a void method. So if you're halfway down a method and you're like, I, I think I'm done, and you want to stop, you can do return semicolon, and that will kill the method. It will not go any further. We won't be using this until we get to selection statements, most likely. Just know that if you have a void method, it can be killed with the return semicolon. Adding method. Here's an example of a simple method that adds two numbers together and returns their sum. Public static int add, and its parameters are int a and int b. So you have to send the method two values an int value, which we're going to call a, a b value, which we're, sorry, another int value, which we'll call b. Public static, they always start off public static for now. Add is a descriptive name of what the method is going to accomplish. It's going to add two things together. And notice where it says public static int. That int is the return type, meaning I'm going to perform some task for you, and I'm going to give you back an int answer. So let's look at the code. Int sum, a new variable, equals a plus b. Return sum. So after we add a together, a and b together, and store them into sum, we then return sum, sending the result back to whoever asked for it. Method overloading. Method overloading is when you have two methods with the same name, but they have different parameters and possibly a different return type. So you can have two methods named add. For example, here's an overloaded method of add. Public static double add double a double b. So in here, here instead we're receiving two double values. And we're returning a double value. But the method name is the same, add. So if you were to call a add method and you were to see resend it a int and an int, we would run the previous one that returns an int. If you send it a double and a double, it would return a double. Now what's actually kind of interesting is if you send it an int and a double, neither method fully works because one wants int int, the other one wants int double. But simple types can be upgraded to more complicated types when choosing a method. For example, if we, re if we sent int double, we couldn't use int int because we cannot treat a double as an int because we'd get possible loss of precision. But an int value can be stored in a double var variable because a double variable is more complicated than, than an int, so it can easily store the int's value. So if we sent int double, double, it would actually run this method here. It would take in the int value as a double and then take in the double value as a double. It would calculate the sum and return a double answer. Calling or invoking a method. To call a method, you just say the name of the method parenthesis, parameters, parenthesis, semicolon. If a value is returned by the method being called here, it's going to be thrown away. It's not being stored. 
if you want to call a method and store the value that is returned by it, it's a name of a variable equals method name parenthesis parameters parenthesis semicolon. The variable has to be of an appropriate type to store the value that's being returned by the method. For example, if we have a method that returns a double, the variable on the left has to be of type double. If the method returns an int, there are several choices that would work. You can store an int into an int, so it'd be okay if the variable were an int. You can also store an int into a double because an int is a simpler type than double. So the variable type, the type of the variable on the left could be a double, even if the method returns an int. So they don't have to match. It's just that the variable on the left must be able to hold what's being returned on the right. By reference and by value. Values that are sent to methods are received either by value or by reference. By value. The method will receive a copy of the value. Note, all primitive data types are sent by value. Changing the value of a received variable in a method will not change the value of the original variable that was passed in the method call. By reference, the method will receive the memory address of the original variable and uses that address to access the original variable. Changing the value of a received variable in a method will change the value of the original variable that was passed in the method call. Objects are sent by reference. Strange string behavior. Strings are passed by reference. When I ask it on a test, strings are passed by reference. We'll see more examples of by reference in later chapters, but what you need to know is even though strings are passed by reference, strings behave as though they were passed by, by value. So if you change a string in a method, it does not change the original. So on a test, you may think, oh, they are passed by value. No, they are passed by reference. And when we get into later chapters on strings, we'll talk about why they behave that way.